Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. This week we're starting a new project. We're going to be making a memory game. You've probably played a game like this before. So it's a card game, and when you flip over cards, you see if the two cards that you flipped over match. And if they do, like this, they disappear. Different variations of this game exist. Uh, ones in which you have a limited number of lives to try and match up everything. Every time you get a pair wrong, you use up one of your lives. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Um, and first of all, we need to set up our cards and our board before we do anything else. So, first things first, you've got your open scratch project here. We've got our sprite one. We're going to rename this sprite card and we're going to go to the top left corner and click on where it says costumes so we've got two costumes here we're going to delete well we have to we have to keep one of them so what we're going to do is we're going to click in the bottom left corner we're going to click on choose a costume and i'm going to choose fruit as the theme for this time round so i'm going to get an Apple. Click the bottom left corner again. Now you can search up in the top left corner by typing in what you're looking for. Or you can take your time and go through the list of things to see the things that you want. You can have an entirely different theme. And if you want, you can have a lot more than me. All right, from memory, I want an orange. And I want a watermelon. And I think that might be enough. So, if you've still got the cat costumes, we need to delete those. You click on the cat costumes on the left here. You should see all the new costumes you've added in. But we need to delete it by pressing that little X in the corner. And I'm also just going to make sure that all of these are named just nicely by clicking on the different costumes along the left you can change the name just here up in the top left corner where it says costume so i want them all to be named apple bananas orange watermelon whatever they actually are so make sure that they've got they've got, they've got an accurate name because that's going to be important later on now we need to draw a new uh, sprite so go to the bottom left corner hover over the cat face and go up to click where it says paint and that's going to make a, a blank costume for us. Let's rename this in the top left corner. Let's rename it blank. This is going to have a blank um, card. Um, now, to explain, to get the sizing right, go to one of your sprites and then select the rectangle tool just here on the left where I'm wiggling my mouse. Click the purple where it says fill. Now there's four buttons. We want to select the button on the right of those four buttons. You can choose a different one if you like, if you want your, yours to look a little bit different. I'm going to make the card back look gray. So we need to choose two different colors. I'm going to have both of these colors be gray, but one of them is going to be a bit darker than the other one. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to look for the outline. Make sure we've got a nice black outline. And it says 4, this number here, next to how thick the outline of our rectangle is. I'm going to put that up to 10, so it's a nice chunky outline. Now we're going to drag a rectangle over the apple or whatever you have in front. And then what I need you to do is go up to the middle top of the screen and see where it says front and back. Click on back and that will send it behind the other, the other um, item. Now, click on this rectangle and drag to move it around, and we want to drag it around. In fact, this is a bit big, so I'm gonna make it a bit smaller by grabbing one of the corners, and maybe even a bit smaller again. Yeah, that seems good. Now you need to drag it around, and there's a little blue cross which is the middle of this sprite. You need to drag it until that blue cross goes right into the middle of that 
um, cross with a circle around it, that crosshairs. And that means that it's, this card's going to be nicely um, uh, centered. Now we're going to do the same thing um, with the bananas, the orange, the watermelon. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. So we're going to go to the select tool, just this picture of the mouse, just underneath where it says fill in the top left corner. Once you've got the select tool, you've got to select your rectangle. And now you should be able to click on copy up on the top of the screen. And then we're going to go to bananas and go paste. We're going to click back like we did before. Move it around, make sure it's in the middle. OK, that looks quite nice. We're going to click paste over the orange. Now, here's an interesting thing. This orange is rather small. So the other problem with the orange is that all the different parts of the orange are all separate. So what we're going to do is I'm going to delete this rectangle, this, uh, this, this card back. And with the select tool, I'm going to drag the entire orange. So we've got all the different parts of the orange selected. And I'm going to click Group. And this makes it a lot easier to move this orange around and all the parts of it and make it bigger and smaller. And if you ever want to ungroup it, you can. So I'm going to go paste, drag the card. We're going to send this card back. OK, that seems good. I can make this orange a little bit bigger so it looks about the same size as the other fruit. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I'm happy with that. So you can take your time over this. Alrighty, we're going to go paste over this watermelon, click the back button to send it back. And then finally, we're going to paste in the blank sprite. And I'm going to drag that blank sprite up to be sprite number one. So now I've got I've got five sprites. You can have a lot more if you want. You can take a bit more time. But I like how all these look. They all kind of look like they belong together. And it looks like there's cards with uh, different items on them. All right, so now we're going to make some code to lay all of these cards out to make a nice grid of cards. And we're going to use clones to do this. All right, so click in the top left corner to go to code. Um, now, because we're making clones, um, this one card here is going to be creating lots of copies of itself, which means we need to make this original one invisible. Otherwise, they're going to hang around and be annoying. So we're going to go to events, the yellow category on the left. We're going to look for when green flag clicked, drag out when green flag clicked. I'm going to zoom in on this to make it nice and big for you guys to see. And then we're going to go to looks, the purple category, and we're going to drag out hide. Um, then I'm going to drag out set size to 100%. I'm going to click on that 100 and change it to 50% because I reckon these cards are going to be a little bit too big. OK, um, so then I'm going to go to switch costume. And we're going to switch the costume to blank. OK, so at the beginning of our code, when we click the Go button, it's going to disappear. And the costume is going to be the blank costume. You can see in the bottom right corner here, our card sprite has gone to the blank costume. That's good. That's what we want. So we're going to go now to the red category, My Blocks. We're going to click on Make a Block. And we're going to type in Create Cards. Now drag this define create cards off by itself. We're going to put a bunch of code inside this define create cards. And that is going to mean that every time we use a create card block, it will do everything underneath define create cards. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that we can use this code later, create cards if we want, um, and, and to restart the game. And also just so that you have a good idea of where all the code for this is. It's nicely labeled. We know that all the code that goes underneath define create cards is about creating all the cards on our board. 
Okay, so I'm gonna give you some numbers and this is gonna be interesting because your cards might be slightly different sizes to mine. Um, so you can adjust these numbers as you like, um, but let's see how it goes first. I might need to even need to adjust them now. So we're gonna send our card to the top left corner and start making clones of itself. So we're gonna to go to the dark blue category, motion, and we're gonna look for go to X, then a number, Y, then a number. Drag out that go to X, Y. These numbers relate to where the sprites are on the screen. The X number says how far left or right the card is. The Y number says how far up or down it is. If you don't um, understand that, don't worry too much. Um, the more scratch projects you'll do, the more you'll use coordinates and you'll get the hang of it. So for now, let's under the go to X type in minus 195. And let's go to the Y number and type in 130. So these numbers, minus 195 is gonna put the card all the way across to the left side of the screen, um, but not quite at the very end. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap between the card and the left side of the screen, which is what we want. And Y is fairly high up on the screen, fairly up, but again, it's gonna leave a bit of a gap from the top of the screen, which is what we want. Um, so now we need to figure out how many rows do we want and how many columns do we want? How many cards do we want in each row? So I wanna say that I want four rows of cards. So let's go to control and let's look for a repeat 10. Drag out that repeat 10, click on the 10 and type in four. This is gonna be four rows. One, two, three, four rows. Now, how many cards do I want in these rows? Let's say seven. Let's drag out a repeat 10 and put it inside. And let's say seven. Okay, so let's look for create clone of myself and put that inside the seven. And let's go to motion, the dark blue category and grab out change X by 10 and put that underneath create clone of myself. Now click on that 10 and type in 65. So this is going to move the card to the right by 65 pixels, which is what we want because it's on the left, we want it to move it right. And it's gonna do this in fact seven times. First it's gonna make the clone, then it's gonna move. Then it's gonna make the clone, then it's gonna move. Okay, so that's good. Now what we want to do is we want to go to set. Um, so, so this is going to do the, that's the entire row. Repeat seven, create clone of myself, change X by 65, perfect. That's now got, gonna take the card all the way to the end of the row. Now it needs to start the next row. So the first thing that we need to do is send it all the way back to the left of the screen. Then we need to make it move down to the next row. So let's send it to all the way back to the left of the screen. Let's get out a set X, not a change X, set X. Now this needs to go after the repeat seven has finished. So it needs to go right here. Can you see on my screen? This is after we've done our row. Set X and our starting point, do you remember, was minus 195. And then we want it to move down. So I'm gonna get out a change Y by 10, but click on that 10 and type in minus 85. These are the numbers that I kind of liked. Let's see what this does. Oh, well, we're not gonna be able to see it yet, are we? So let's first, let's go to control because all these clones are gonna be hidden because we need them to be hidden. Um, we need the original to be hidden, but we need the clones to show themselves when they are created as clones. So go to control the orange category and drag out when I start as clone. Put that off by itself somewhere. 
Now let's go up to looks, the purple category, and drag out show. That's from near the bottom. When I start as clone, show. Now I believe this should work. Let's hit go. Excellent. Nice. I quite like the way that looks. Now if your cards are too big, or if they're a bit too small and you would like them to be a bit bigger, go into your costumes and try adjusting one of the um, cards. Let's say I want it to be a bit bigger, let's say. Uh, so make the make change the, the card how you want it to change. Make sure it's centered. And then what you need to do is delete all the rectangles from the others that you've done. And you need to do what you did before. We copy, we paste, we send it to the back, we make sure it's in the middle. So this is a, because if we don't do it this way, they're all going to be different sizes and it's going to look really bad. So it might seem like it's a bit unnecessary. There we go, I've made it a bit bigger and the gaps now are a little bit narrower. I quite like how this looks. Excellent. All right, now just, just to see what it looks like um, theoretically when we start the game, let's put in a bit of simple placeholder code that's gonna make this a bit more visual. Let's go to events and the th look from the, th the yellow category and drag out when this sprite clicked. Then underneath that, go to looks, the purple category and drag out switch costume. Oh, got a, got a cat here, it's come to say hello. It's got switch costume and we're gonna switch the costume to a random costume. So we're gonna go to operators, the green category, operators, and look for pick random one to 10. Drag that out and put it over that circular, mine says watermelon. Switch costume to watermelon. Can you see that when you put the pick random over that little round uh, thing, little socket after where it says two, it fits. If you, put, if you drop it in like that, now it says switch costume to pick random one to 10. Now, remember, if you go back to costumes, the first costume is blank. So we don't want that to be one of the random numbers. But have a look at how many costumes you have. I've got five. So we're gonna, I'm gonna make it pick random two to five, because I want it to be costume number two, costume number three, costume number four, or costume number five. I don't want it to be number one. Now, if you have more costumes or less, you can um, change this. So let's see if this works. If you click on a, a sprite, hey, there we go. So now we've got this just sort of little sneak peek of what it's going to look like when we do the rest of the coding. So that's enough for this week. Next week, we're going to continue doing the coding to make our game work. We're going to do some cool visual effects. Hope you had fun with this one. As always, subscribe to see the next episode. Uh, check out the description for all of the physical events we're doing at City of Swan Libraries in Perth, Western Australia, um, as part of the Futures Lab project. If you want to come in in person and do some cool robotics workshops and coding, and we're even doing some esports and video games um, tournaments in the library. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and until I see you guys next week, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.